You're listening to Let's Talk Jobs, where we give you practical insights into jobs and careers. I'm Tim Chen, and today we're talking about the importance of relationship management. When I reflect on the large investment decisions that I've made in my career, things like cost, feature parity, resources required to execute, they were all certainly a part of the decision-making process. However, what often influenced the deal was that special account rep who was able to actively listen to my needs, partner with me in solution building, and become that trusted advisor who made me feel safe and confident in the decisions that I was about to make. Their ability to build and maintain that relationship over time usually resulted in repeat or renewed business. Warren Buffett once said that it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. So today, we're going to have a conversation with Nicholas Meslak. He's the Director of Customer Success at Bright Edge. In this video, he's going to talk about topics such as the importance of being authentic and what it actually looks like in practice, tips to building rapport and planting seeds for future conversations, and one simple question you can ask that uncovers the root of your customer's needs. All right, let's get started. Hey guys, today we're talking about relationship management. Joining us, Nick Meslak. Nick, how are you doing? Doing good, Tim. How are you doing? Really, really good. You know, the topic of relationship management on your case, customer success, is just really interesting because unlike engineering or being a creative or product management where there's a direct correlation between a hard skill maybe and the career path, relationship management is really actually built on soft skills and your ability to create rapport with someone. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing today and how long you've been doing it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, my role here, uh, what what I'm doing today is I, I lead a customer success team here at Bright Edge. So Bright Edge is a uh, software as a service company, SaaS company um, in the digital marketing space. And so uh, we work with our customers day in and day out to take advantage of our platform. So um, the way that we like to think about it is we're we're almost that personal trainer, right? Anybody can go sign up for a gym membership, but you get that personal trainer to push you a little bit harder, to help you make sure you're doing things the right way, to take advantage of their expertise and you know, hopefully along the way, get better at, at all those things that you're trying to work on and, and trying to perfect. And so you know, that's what we, that's a challenge that we like to take on every day. Now, the, the challenging part of that question is how long have I, have I been doing this? Well, about <laughs> five years here, at Bright Edge, but I've been in this space uh, pretty much my whole career in in a lot of ways. Mm. So so we're kind of coming up in about twenty, which is hard to admit out loud. Um, <laughs> but uh, but some way, shape, or form in digital marketing and and this sort of you know relationship and and account management dynamic working with with clients and customers. You know, when I was in high school, I remember. All of my friends were really decorated academically already. And I remember um, some of them clearly were already destined to be a doctor, right? Or some of them were, you know, they're going to create a patent somewhere. And um, I was academically relevant with that group. Um, but the only thing I had to hang my hat on was like communication skills. I remember back then, it's like, you can't put that on a resume. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't translate well. It doesn't read right. Um and I never knew what that would do for me in my career. So early on, I was a little lost trying to figure out, like, how do I apply that to something that's even meaningful? And early in my career, you know, I didn't have the benefit of mentorship to kind of lead me through how to grow this as a soft skill and kind of build upon that. And so I kind of personally stumbled into it. You know, I started off in project management on the agency side and people were like, hey, you seem to do well in um, talking to customers. Why don't we put you in front of a customer? And that led me into account management, kind of like you. But the difference is you chose to double down on that. And so I'm just really fascinated about how and why you chose or when you knew actually that this is the right career choice for you. Yeah, it's it's a great question. And and I think that throughout, throughout my career, I've, I've been very privileged that I've gotten to try and do different things. I you know, very early on, I was at a small web development company and they kind of said, hey, we got this group of customers and, you know, they don't kind of fit our core, you know, customer base, but they need help and and go. And so 
uh kind of got thrown into the deep end of the pool there but you <laughs> but you really learn a lot you make mistakes um <clears throat> you figure out different ways of doing things how you communicate to different people that was a real lesson in talking with different stakeholders right how i'm talking with somebody at you know, my day-to-day -day level versus how we're talking up the food chain, you know, to, to some of those executives. And from there, I, I kind of continued down the agency path, probably a little similar to you. And, and again, you just, you start to take those skills and, and, and multiply. I think for me, I recognize that uh, at my core, I, I love data. Um, there's a, uh, well, you and I have known each other for a little while, so you know I like to speak in quotes and analogies. Yeah. Um, but there's a there's a quote from W. E. Deming, uh, at, at, uh, at an old data analyst uh, from from IBM, but but very famous. And it's in God we trust; all others bring data. And so <laughs> for me, that, that always was very meaningful. Of you know, again, we can make sense of it, we can analyze it, we can talk about it, but um, you know, hey. I, I understand it at a really, really, you know, strong level. And that's when I kind of, to your point of doubling down, I realized I could take all that data and I could take those sort of complex situations and I could make it easier uh, for people to understand. And so as, as I started to have success with that, um, you know, for me, uh, I had this wonderful opportunity where somebody said, hey, why don't, why don't you, you know, kind of have some people start to report to you. And that was that was the true light bulb moment for me, which is, oh, I can take all these things that I've learned here and, you know, have gotten pretty good at and, and, and really done well. But now I can start to, you know, take that and, and help others do the same thing. Oh, boy, uh, that that sounds like a lot of fun and, and <laughs> challenging. And, you know, it's kind of been um, uh, a thousand miles an hour ever since. You know, you said something really cool there, which is. You, know, you had or you probably developed the self-awareness on like what really drives you or what you're passionate about in your case data right and i think you also mentioned you kind of made some mistakes along the way and I'm, I'm thinking about myself as well i absolutely made mistakes as a matter of fact when you're talking about relationship management um or customer relationship management and that whole field it's hard not to look at the people around you who are also doing it and people who are a lot more well-versed and or maybe very charismatic and you're like oh man like it should look like this, but I'm like this. And mistakes I made early in my career were, you know, I lacked the self-confidence um, to go and put myself out there necessarily, right? And I start off my career, actually, <laughs> look, look at the, uh, the Myers-Briggs. Like I started off as an ENFP. I'm now ISTJ. Like the older I got, the less I want to talk to people like this. Um, but I remember early in my career, um, extroversion, like in talking to people was something I was really good at. Um, like friends, but when it came to talking to stakeholders where they're much more senior than me, I got really, really introverted. And some mistakes I made early on was trying almost too hard to build that relationship and rapport. And it came off as really ungenuine. And I think I let my age get to me, my lack of experience. And I made all sorts of flubs on the way. Like the I would talk with confidence in areas where I shouldn't have and became really exposed, right? Um, so for you, you mentioned you know, some of the growing pains and how you kind of developed this. Like, can you share some examples of your journey? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and I think you, you hit on something that um, I like to talk about a lot, which is be authentic. Um, it's, it's very easy when we're trying to be something we're not, it, it, People see through that. And so having authenticity is, is really important, especially as you're trying to build relationships. And, and for me, you know, there's that the, the old analogy, fake it till you make it right. You, you know, <laughs> yeah. you try your best and that'll get you that'll get you part of the way. Um, but eventually it's if you're if you're not putting in the work or it's not real from you, it's, it's going to start to fall flat. I, I think I had the privilege I had some very good uh, uh, bosses early on that helped me kind of just understand, you know, again, keep things simple. Don't, you know, you don't have to have every answer. You don't have to have every solution. For me, I think I had to learn on um, my own personal experiences. Um, you know, I think everybody has their different road in life, certainly from a career, from education, but also from life. 
And, you know, I had some adversity growing up with, you know, my uh, you know, family situation and some of those things. And I learned, you know, you kind of, you kind of start to say like, okay, what, you know, we got through, I got through that. I got, I got through those things and yes, this is tough too. And, but it kind of, it allowed me to say, you can do this. You know, you can kind of push yourself. Yes. You, you've struggled at times, but you can kind of go through it. Um, but you know, again, it's, it doesn't make those moments. I've had uh, customers call my bosses. I've had, uh, I've been called to the principal's office, right. You know, to have to talk about what the heck happened in that situation. Um, I made mistakes, you know, I've misspent budgets. I I've done, I've done those things. And, you know, what I try to say is, you know, take it, learn, learn from that, you know, make sure that you're, you know, taking a lesson away from each of those experiences so you can apply it moving forward and, you know, just make a commitment to getting better. Um, you again, say, Hey, have accountability. Um, mm-hmm. the, the worst thing in the world is to try to make something disappear. I, I just, I don't, I don't believe in that. Like, it's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to mess up. Hey, got that wrong. You know, let's figure out how to make it right and, and move forward. Um, and, and I mean, like I said, there's, there's, there's lots of those that have happened over the, over the time, over the years. Um, but it's, it's some of those situations where, where, like I say, you're kind of, that back kind of feels like you're pushed against the wall or you feel like, gosh, I'm just having a bad month. I'm having a bad quarter. I'm having a bad six months or a year. Um, but that doesn't define you, right? You've made it through adverse situations before you just, you know, again, it's just working, working to figure out how to push through it. I think that accountability piece you spoke on is so important. You know, on the client side where I'm sitting now, I actually, it aggravates me when I have a vendor come in and they're obviously they're excited about their product. So that is totally fine. I have no issues issues there, but they come in almost with a sense of arrogance and they promise all these things. And I know that it's not always what they seem right. And but they keep pushing it. They keep pushing it. Or even if we've already signed the contract, like the, the conversations with them always feel like they're trying to push me to do a renewal or something like that. Like at the end, that like renewals, that's going to happen. Like you need that, right? But it's how you get there that really matters. And I think I really resonated with um, with vendors who are just really authentic. Like they'll just shoot it to me real. It's like, hey, here's what's really going on. Like, let's forget all the bells and whistles. Like, let's just really talk about what matters to your business and taking the time to understand what I care about. And then just having a normal human dialogue, which may or may not directly relate to the actual product or service at hand. But building that trust then allows me to have a conversation with them about something like renewals. Because again, it's it's a difference between a vendor trying to push their product on me versus me seeing them now as a unquestionable subject matter expert. And because of that trust, I want to give them my business. Like they want to earn it. I want to give yeah. it. So can you tell, like, actually when I worked with you, that was actually the, the the big things I noticed about you as well. Like you just, you took the time to understand my business. You talked to me, you kept it real. You're really clear around the shortcomings, either from your offering, but you helped me understand a path forward regardless. And you also helped me understand some blind sites on my side of the business as well. And that tug and pull is really, really healthy. So can you tell me a little bit about like, like what's your secret sauce? Like when you're building relationships with customers and if it were, or maybe it's like the top 10 things people should take into <laughs> consideration or just how you do it. Um, how do you build your relationships with the customers? Cause you do it really, really well. Yeah, no, I, I, well, number one, I appreciate that. Um, I, I do think there's, there's three things that I, um, I've sort of embraced in, in my past. And I ask my team to do every day. Number one is lead with empathy. I think that's more important now than ever before, um, considering all the things we've gone through. And I mean, we've, it, it's been a lifetime of experience in four years, right. With all, all the things everybody's gone through. Um, the second is to be vulnerable. Um, you, you have to, you have to have those real conversations. Um, you can't pretend to have all the answers. Um, and sometimes you have to ask tough questions. And you got to put yourself out there, right? And but again, that's how real relationships are formed, mm-hmm. um, and that and that's how bonds are created. And the third one might sound a little funky, but it's it's being comfortable being uncomfortable. 
Um, mm-hmm. There are going to be times where, as, as you know, again, as a vendor, we get asked tough questions, or we say, "Well, why is, why, why doesn't it work this way? Why isn't it this way? <laughs> why, you know, why can't I see this thing or get this thing?" And you may not have the answer, and you may have to say, "I don't know." And that's a great question, and I've got a bunch of smart people behind me. Like, let let me go, let me go figure that out. Or, you know, again, sometimes we have to say, "No, it it just doesn't work." the way that you want it to, but there are things we can do to help get you to where you want to go. And again, to your, you know, kind of talking through um, some, some of the things you mentioned earlier, especially earlier in your career, that is incredibly difficult to do that, you know, that those are things that just feel like, you know, again, I, 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 re, I can remember the customers in my still to this day where I was like, I'm going to go get beat up today. I, you know, I know it's going to be a tough, tough meeting and tough conversation. I can remember that feeling. And we try to normalize that. And we, we try to say, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to, you know, again, have that, you know, but let's, let's think about what happens, right? The worst thing that happens is yes, to get upset. And, you know, again, we've got some work to do to fix that situation, but more often than not, they're going to appreciate the fact that you took the time to say, we've looked at this from every angle. This is kind of what to expect. This is what we need to do. Or, you know, again, in some cases, hey, we really need you to fix, you know, you got to work on this. Like, this is really going to, you know, be 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 the main um, main point of focus. And um, again, I think more often than not, you know, your your customers, your clients appreciate that because, again, it's authentic. It's real. It's honest. And there's an actual relationship back and forth. And it's not I would say you know, my, my hope is that eventually we earn enough confidence and appreciation from the people we work with that we're not a vendor, we're a partner. I always want to, I always want to make that, that strive is to get from vendor to partner. And again, we've got to continue to earn that from, from everybody that we work with. Um, But, you know, it's something that we strive to do. I love that. And how that looks like in practice for me, when I'm, when I'm having a real life dialogue. And by the way, I'm about to give away my secret sauce. So I think my power of influence might go down after this because I'm about to reveal it. But um, there's really three things I'm always doing at any given time when talking to either a peer of mine, a supervisor, a C-suite, or even a vendor. It's like acknowledgement of their statement. And then it is reframing my understanding of what they're trying to solve for. And then ask three questions, get deep. And what that would look like is someone can come to me with either either a request, a complaint, or even a praise or whatever it looks like. The next statement for me is usually like, cool, thank you for saying that. Do you mean X, Y, and Z? Like, just want to make sure I understand your point of view. And they'll say yes or no, whatever. And they'll expand upon that. The next three questions are the easiest questions to ask that makes you look smart, but it requires very little effort. What does that mean to you? Can you say what does that what does that mean to you again? What does that mean to you again? And so that what that looks like is like normally someone's come in and say, Hey, look, Tim, like I have this concern about this website because I have some subjective opinion about it. Okay, cool. Well, like, can you help me understand like what you mean? Is this coming from someone else? Is it coming from you? Like what are your observations? They'll say something, right? Maybe they'll say something about performance, or maybe if they have a, a, a point of view on user experience. Cool. Next question is cool. What does a good user experience look like to you? Like if you were to do this correctly, like what would that look like to you? And they'll they'll go through that and they might get down to something very specifically. Then you, then you can then say, okay, oh, cool. Well, if we were to do something differently, like what you're suggesting, like what would, success, what would success look like to you? And this line of questions will either expose that it is coming from nothing, it's ethereal, or you might help them, you might discover what they really care about that has nothing to do with the original question, or you might help them realize that their question isn't really that substantial. But when you get three layers down, then you can say, cool, well, then you're the subject matter expert. Let me come to the table now with what I believe. If if we're acknowledging the true, if we're aligned to the true problem statement, then here's how I believe we can solve for that. And that's how you meet in the middle. And that, again, you're it's a very low cost to you to ask those questions. But what it does is it makes you look like you're involved in the conversation, right? And And they actually psychologically because the outcome gets more substantial, they project that onto you. So now you somehow look more intelligent than you are. And I use this all the time 
especially when talking with people of which I have, I'm like out of my immediate discipline. Like I have no idea. I don't understand what's going on. And you ask you questions. All of a sudden you seem like you're an expert and all of a sudden you're leading some tiger team that you shouldn't be leading. Right. Um, so that I'm assuming that's similar to like your discernment process, right. As you're kind of building a relationship and just qualifying and understanding someone's maybe concern or request. Yeah. I, you know, and again, I, I love how you, how you can take a, 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 a similar process to, you know, somebody you work with a peer, a mentor, a boss, a C-level, a customer, right. You can see how these things apply. I think it all, you know, again, it comes down to your, you know, and I, and I think it's important for all relationships. Relationships are value based. They're value driven. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when we're in situations, especially, you know, kind of from a, a workplace standpoint, you know, there there's a value that is expected of me as a manager to somebody that reports to me. And, and I, I'm going to give everything I've got to them. So they come to me with those same questions. You know, I, I, I think I, uh, the reframing technique is probably one that uh, my team knows they're going to get uh, <laughs> for me because I'm always going to make sure I understand it. I'm always going to make sure. And I like to challenge them back, right? Well, what do you think we should do, right? You know, let's, let's, I'm not, you know, let's just not make it a me telling you, right? Let's do this together um, within, you know, even though, you know, friendships though, or, or, or peer relationships. Um, I've, I've learned over time that, you know, again, the stronger the relationships I have are the ones where we, we've kind of committed a value to each other, whether it's just bouncing ideas off each other. Hey, I, I've been thinking about this. Am I crazy? Is, does this make sense? Is, is this something that's valid? And, you know, again, it's asking questions. It's showing, it, it's showing an interest. It's, you know, it's, again, it's a two-way street. Um, but I think to to the uh, the process that you sort of laid out, which is which is awesome, is it sort of creates this avenue where you're bringing you're bringing a focus for those individuals. Mm -hmm. That's really sometimes hard to see when you're just staring at the thing over and over and over, and you kind of get to the core of what matters or the recognition of ooh, maybe that's not where I thought it was yet, or maybe maybe that's not as real as I thought it was yet. And that's super valuable and, and something that, you know, again, simple to do, just a few questions, just, just a few, few techniques, but um, can really uh, shine a bright light on, on what you're trying to achieve. So I got a question more directly tied to your specific line of work of customer sure. success. How do you stay top of mind for your customer without feeling like you're pestering them? <laughs> um that's it's a good it's a good question you know we're I, i'm a big believer in leveraging process to be more of uh, to be more efficient and the efficiency allows us to be more effective so i think that there's a lot of expectation setting especially as you start a relationship uh with a customer or client where, hey, we're going to talk, this is the frequency, this is, this is what we want to do. And, you know, in between, you're going to have questions. I might have some questions. We might have some things that we're going back and forth about. But you have a consistent sort of relationship or consistent timing to it. It allows you to always have that kind of fallback, always have that moment of like, hey, you know, we know we're going to get together. We know we're going to um, uh, have these conversations or, or talk through these things. I think when that starts to shake one way or the other, um, where you know somebody's like, "Hey, I can't make the meeting today. Oh, I gotta cancel that next meeting. Oh, I'm on PTO. I'm on vacation. All those things happen, and that's 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 okay. Stuff happens, right? It's life. But you have to kind of recommit to getting back to that that process, uh, because eventually, what ends up happening is if the process breaks down, then we're chasing, right? Or mm -hmm. you know, again, God forbid. In any any type of relationship, a customer is chasing an answer, right? That's something everybody in this space wants to avoid. Um, so, so again, I think it's I think it's setting that right expectation. I think it starts at the beginning. I think it's being consistent. Um, we're all creatures of habit, you know. I, I think knowing that you have that that again that touch base every two weeks at you know Wednesday at ten, right? That that's helpful. It just it just makes it consistent. Um, but but again, I think it's it's also about really good communication, um, mm -hmm. and, and making sure that you know again both parties feel like they're being heard, 
both parties feel like they they've got a stake in the game um, and if something changes okay let's let's evaluate what do we need to do to again get this back either on solid footing or you know hopefully even make it better if, mm-hmm. if possible yeah i agree and i think it also depends on the level of the organization of which your customer is at right so they're a individual contributor versus a senior level it definitely matters i know for me, you know, now leading teams, the types of emails I always really open my eyes are always value driven. So like, let's say you would come in and be hey, Tim, we haven't talked in a few, few weeks. I had my team run a quick report and like, here's like five things I noticed. Like, are you interested in reviewing that? I would almost always say yes, right? Because yeah. because I'm trying to solve a business problem as well. And you're bringing value to the table. It requires more work on your end, of, of course, but that's how, at least at my level, I know that you're looking out for my business. A lot of times those conversations can turn into a side conversation where you come in and you review the data points, right? And then you can also in that meeting say, hey, Tim, by the way, let's have a follow-up because you just mentioned something else that is piquing interest in me. Let's talk about that separately. But let's go through this here. Now you're planting seeds and re-engaging me again. And that, at least for me personally, that always works really well with me. Otherwise, I tend to like forward the emails away or delete them. Like if it's if always a sync up, it's like, oh, what are we going to talk about? It's a real pet peeve of mine if no agenda comes out before a meeting because now right. I don't know, like my even carving 30 minutes out of schedule can be hard. And so like that also matters. But yeah, insights or value driven feedback or follow up always resonates well with me. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And, and I think there is, to your point, where you're at in the organization changes how those conversations happen. So if it's somebody that we're talking to day to day, right, this is this is part of their their job is to be inside of our platform and amongst, you know, other things or we're solely focused, right? We're going to be like, like, let's be tactical. Like, hey, we've, we've got a plan. We've got a strategy. We're going. Talking to that be, that, that business leader, that, that executive or, or that decision maker hey, let's make sure we've got our QBRs in place, our quarterly business reviews. Let's make sure we're talking about the data that's important. You told us this matters to you. Here's a report you're going to get once a week that you always know. And if I ever see something that's not right with it or you know, one thing that seems off, I'm going to make sure you see it. I'm going to make sure you, you hear from me. It's, it's making sure that, again, you have that communication and that connection throughout the organization. That's one thing that I think a lot of um, customer success teams in the last year or so have faced uh, have faced struggles as the dynamics of of teams and, and organizations have changed um, over the last uh, year or so. You know, again with um, you know team team shapes looking different. You know, folks coming going. Um, it's definitely been at a higher degree in terms of volatility than I think we've seen in the last few years. And so, you know, all of a sudden it's like, ooh, that that was my person. That person's not there anymore. And so we've got to go make sure we get to our new person and go find that. And, you know, sometimes it's going to be like, oh, wow, we they don't know anything about us, right? So let's go through the whole education. Let's sell. Let's let's teach them who we are. Let's teach them how we can help. Um, and I think that dynamic is is important because, again, depending on who you're talking to, that message should be, you know, particular for them. Yeah, I'm thinking of a specific um, example where you and I worked together, um, where the company was, it's a, it was a rocket ship company, right? And so like any, like any organization, product marketing was really passionate about creating content. Um, now, specifically for Bright Edge, I remember that one of the insights you gave me, but I wish we dove deeper into it, was you have influx of content coming in written by people who aren't even thinking about SEO first. Usually it's like, I'll write it and then we'll optimize it after the fact. And that doesn't always work out really well. I remember you were helping me understand how to maybe influence or make those product marketers more efficient at creating better content from the get-go, right? Using obviously features within your uh, with your tool to allow you to measure efficacy of content for SEO or whatnot. The adoption of that was something that could have been improved upon. So I'm, I'm even thinking back, like if you, if we were to brainstorm together on like, Hey, this is actually change management. We're talking about here where you're wanting to fundamentally change how content is being 
envisioned or created of which this tool then can be a vehicle to do that. I think we, we at that point uh, in engagement, we stayed at the feature level. But I think if you and I whiteboarded together, like, hey, how do we really help change this behavior? That probably would have made adoption even greater, actually, right? And instead of web being the only organization that used it, it would have been greater. So I think the lesson there learned is really taking the time to understand what challenges your customer is trying to solve for, maybe beyond their immediate scope and think upstream a little bit and then be a part of that conversation. Because now you're, again, you're a strategic, strategic partner. You don't have to push your product to have a conversation, but you're also getting a lot of intel around how a company works. You're getting intelligence on the culture and how think decisions are made. And then you can then f- figure out where your product fits in. But, um, but I remember even... And with that same topic, even though this almost looks like it was like a critique, on a flip side, you gave me a lot of advice around how to um, maybe take the insights and influence conversationally or influence a editorial calendar and how they might do this stuff. So you you found another way to solve for that. Um, but I think yeah, just helping people understand or even vet out their thought process or getting insight on even how they're making decisions or quite frankly, understanding how their manager is making decisions can make all the difference, right? And and boy, oh boy, aren't we in this world right now with AI, right? I mean, this is every industry, every business, um, ours included, right? You know, how we're leveraging AI, how, and, and one thing about Bright Edge, I've, uh, you know, we, we've had AI in, in our platform for, many years and I, I would you know say we're at the forefront of that within the industry um and and more and more coming uh every every single day it feels like but it is to to that idea of change management i think it is uh it is a for those of us in customer success for those of us you know that are working with with customers directly this is a challenge that they're facing and sometimes it is hey figure out how we use this to be more effective and efficient. And, you know, again, how can you help them, um, you know, make that work, you know, within whether it's within your product or in addition to your product. Um, I think that's, that's a challenge that we're all facing right now, but um, it's, it's one that's real and Mm -hmm. it's, it's not going anywhere. So, you know, it is, it is one of those things of figuring out how to embrace that better um, I think is a, a it's it's going to be a challenge to all all of us in customer success. Well, Nick, I just want to thank you for your time. This was a really fun conversation for me. As a matter of fact, I would love to have you come back and just talk about other stuff. Um, if you're open to it, how can people find you? Yeah, so uh, I I am on LinkedIn, although uh, admittedly um, I'm not the best LinkedIner. Um, I got I got <laughs> to learn from Tim. Um, I will say I've actually been super impressed. Um, I think Tim, with what you've been doing, but so many folks that I've seen that have sort of embraced this opportunity to share their knowledge, um, it's really turned that platform into something that um, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't didn't necessarily see it becoming, and it's been um, certainly fantastic for me to see and, and for me to uh, be a part of. So please reach out to me there. Um, I'm happy to connect with anybody, and especially if there's anybody that. Um, you know, I could be of assistance to, or just talk to, or, you know, set up a chance to connect. I'd I'd love to do it. Thanks, Nick. Have a good day. Thanks, Tim.